So hello, everybody, and welcome to the High Velocity Service Management webinar series. This is episode one, where we're going to be talking about high velocity service management at the touch of a button. Um, do you know that you have all these features that we're about to speak about just at the touch of a button? In this episode, we're going to share some of the top tips on getting the most value from pre-built templates in Jira service management so you can start serving your customers as quickly as possible. So I'm going to start with Gary and um, Jira service management templates themselves. So mm -hmm. one of the features of JSM is out of the box support for different types of service management teams, meaning you don't need to build everything from scratch. Could you expand on this facility and approaches where this has been used? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, Atlassian very much believe in the uh, their tools can be used with with any team and so jira as a platform actually comes with lots of pre-configured templates basically so that you can get everything up and running out of the box without the need to spend days months weeks uh configuring it so for jira service management there are basically six different templates that are built in that cover really 95 percent of the use cases for using uh, jira service management as a as a customer service as a service desk for customers so classically you've got the it service management one and that's by far the biggest template and that, that comes with everything pre-configured for all the it all key practices so instant management problem management change enablement service request management asset and configuration management alert alerting and monitoring everything's pre-configured pre-built the only thing you really have to do if you wanted to you could start immediately the only thing you'd have to do is import your assets and that's it really you can be up and running in in minutes if you really want to um and that's by far the largest one um and obviously if you're going to build an it service management service desk that's the one you'd start with uh, you can obviously customize it there's then um a special template for legal uh, a special template for hr uh, and a special template for facilities which are another three common service desks for different service teams. Um, obviously, the legal one is focused on things like requesting document reviews, requesting contracts um, reviews, requesting, you know, access to a, a legal team of some kind. HR similar, you know, request a, a, an HR review of some kind, requesting some other kind of um, thing like a disciplinary or something like that. And then um, the facilities one, basically, you know, reporting that a toilet's broken or a radiator's leaking or something. And again, those come pre-configured, ready to go. And then you can just add and customize and tailor it how you want. And then finally, there's two kind of generic ones. There's a customer service desk one and there's a general service management one. The general service management is very basic. It's basically, you can ask a question, the ticket gets created, and then a team can answer it. And that's great for sort of just general business teams or, you know, it, a wide variety of use cases that are non-specific the customer service one is much more focused at providing a customer support portal so where you're looking where you've got a product or a service that you provide to customers outside of your business where they can request that service or they can ask questions about that service or even suggest enhancements to it and those are basically the six templates so yeah you can get up and running really quickly um, and it's a real bonus really for Jira customers great Cheers, Gary. And um, yeah, I thought it's worth sharing. Actually, I spoke to a customer only last week. They're one of Europe's largest e-tailers. And they were telling me the same story, how after themselves going through uh, an onboarding of Jira Service Manager in IT, they were actually asked by their facilities team, oh, can you uh, can you help me build a service desk myself? And they were just able to do that. So with no partner, all by themselves, using that templated approach. So once you really get going, the ability to spread it around your own company is actually quite... Um, quite you know quick and available to everybody so yeah that's a really good example that's thanks right. for that um right so something else i wanted to dig into is which i referenced in the start of the webinar actually is the ability to turn features on and off so i think something jira cloud customers don't know is just how easy it is to gain these service management features we're talking about at the moment could you explain how simple this is and then any advice for a jira cloud customer who's during your jira software cloud customer today yes yeah, so uh, Jira service management has changed quite a bit over the last couple of years. And as new features are added and new capabilities are added, um, obviously, if you're an existing Jira customer, you might not be aware of some of these capabilities. Uh, they tend to add them to the templates we've just been talking to. But if, obviously, if you created your service desk before the template was changed, then you won't necessarily have these features. And so within your project settings, 
for your service project within Jira Service Management, you'll find a, a tab that says features. And if you go into there, you'll find a load of sliders or switches that you can toggle on and off, which will basically add in many of the new enhancements and capabilities that have been added over the past few years. They're also an easy way to customize uh, the template as well. So if you create an IT service management project and you don't want to use it for change your name, for example, you can just turn the slider off and it will just turn off those features and hide them in the UI. Um, so, and there's quite a lot now. I think last count is about 10 things you can slide on and off. Um, the key ones really are the ITIL key practices can be toggled on and off. So instant management, change enablement, um, service request management, problem management. They can all be turned on and off within the user interface. So if you're not going to do problem management and change enablement on your service desk, for example, you can just switch those off and it'll disappear. Or if you've got a an older service desk and you want to activate those and turn those features on, you can just turn those sliders on. They mainly bring in the new enhanced integrations between the various layers within Jira Service Management. So, for example, two of those three will enable you to use Ops Genie to send alerts to your on-call team when there's a major incident, for example. Um, and that's just a simple case of sliding it on and off you go. Uh, it will just add the link in and you can start using Ops Genie. Some of the more recent features like... Um, the ability to have default request types and um, I think the other ones now, uh, some of the more cutting edge features, they also tend to go under sliders. Again, mainly so that if you've got an existing service desk, they're not going to impact you. But if you choose to use them, you can just turn them on. So it's always worth having a look in that feature set, looking at what's there and, and deciding if something you want to include in your service desk. Great. And then uh, customers who are only Jira um, software customers today, and but they go, oh, do you know what? I think this looks quite good, uh, Jira Service Management. What's an approach they could use to even trial Jira Service Management today? Could you just talk about that a minute? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing to bear in mind, if you're a cloud customer and you're using the Jira platform, you already actually have Jira Service Management. It's built into the platform itself. Um, and so it's just a simple case, really, of just activating uh, either the, the free trial or a 30-day trial of either premium uh, or standard uh, and that can be done with like two mouse clicks and as soon as you've done that then you will have the ability to create service projects or basically service desks and then again using those templates i just described so the best way to just evaluate it really if you're an existing jira customer is you can do uh, an indefinite free uh, service desk if you keep it to just three licensed users and you can try out all six of those templates look at some of those features and decide if those are things that your you know your business would benefit from yeah and that's a really good takeaway free of charge and you know certainly service management um experienced professionals or you know they'll be able to get the handle handle of it quite quickly and then i wonder on that point so someone's had a trial they like what they see how could they engage with a partner like a clear vision or another platinum solution partner to then actually bring this into the business maybe just expand on how we do that yeah so um if you're looking, particularly if you're looking to do one of the more complex use cases, particularly an IT service management service desk, customer service desk, potentially HR service desk can also be quite complex. You can, of course, just use the out-of-the-box template, but the chances are you'll want to tailor it for your specific business needs. And also, you may want to include some of the more advanced features, which do require you know a little bit of configuration, a little bit of design, solution design work. Um, the approach we take is um, is three phased. So in the first phase, we'll do what we call discovery, which is a couple of um, interview sessions. They're not very long, sort of three to four hours each, where we'll basically assess your current situation. So any service desk you currently use, or if you haven't got a service desk, maybe you're using email and spreadsheets. We'll, we'll basically review how you're working now, what the business is trying to achieve, what your you know, what your uh, vision is, what value you're looking to provide your customers and what co-creation of value you're looking to achieve from your customers through a through a service desk. Um, that is that's a, a formal ITIL assessment, but that sounds quite scary. It just means we structure the, the question and answer and the, and the assessment itself. Look at where you are, look at where you're trying to get to. And then what we do is we produce a very detailed report, which we call a discovery report, which basically says, OK, these are the things we think you need to tailor from the out of the box solution in order to achieve it. Here's the kind of priority order 
uh, this is going to give you the most bang for your buck. This stuff down here is nice to have that you could do in the future. We provide fully detailed instructions and step-by-step -step instructions and examples of how you can actually do that yourself if you want to. Uh, if obviously you want some more help with that or you want us to provide training or coaching and mentoring around that, We've obviously got training packages to skill you up on the various aspects of the tool, particularly around assets and configuration management and incident problem management, which are some of the more complex areas. Um, we also can help you then actually tailor the solutions, adding business rules, add changing permission structures, things like that, you know, because every business is different, basically. Um, and typically that entire process from starting from the discovery through to going through what we call prototyping, which is, you know, designing it and setting it up and testing it and going live with it. Typically it's a sort of three to four week period. Um, total effort, anything between six to 10 days at the most, if you're looking for us as a partner to assist you with it. Obviously, as I said, you can actually, if you want to, do it yourself and just take a bit longer. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for that. That's a great takeaway for everybody watching. Um, so I wanted to touch on some of the new features, which, uh, you know, that's the great thing about SaaS platforms. The features come thick and fast. Um, so could you explain the new advanced forms feature that launched earlier this year? Yeah. So anyone familiar with a service desk, often what you'll want to have is a self-service, customer self-service portal where customers can go to a website, fill in a form and request a service of some kind, whether it's help with something or reporting a problem and all those kinds of things. So uh, Jira has what, what are called basic forms, which you can design yourself, where you can, you can basically ask a series of questions, you know, what's your name, what's the problem you're having, when did it occur, that kind of thing. But for some of these more complex use cases, particularly things like legal facilities, um, employee onboarding in it things like change enablement change requests things like that the forms need to be a lot more dynamic and a lot more feature rich and ask a lot more questions and so advanced forms was introduced about six months ago um uh and it comes with over 300 pre-built template forms um this includes over 70 well, nearly 70 for it so everything from change requests through to you know um employee it equipment onboarding and offboarding that kind of thing there's 40 odd for marketing there's about another 40 i think for legal so you've got things like document reviews indem insurance indemnity claims things like that these are all pre-built forms that you can just with one click enable on your customer service portal and then have your customers start to record information within them and the beauty of this is you can design your own as well so you can take these existing forms and and modify them and tailor them or you can create your own forms from scratch and if you've currently got forms that are in word documents you know you send out a word document to someone they fill it in and email it around we can actually take that turn it into one of these advanced forms it's really quick and easy to do it's almost just copying and pasting and then you've then got that built into your service desk and your customers can start raising tickets and filling in that information uh, straight away fantastic i mean if that's not a reason to go to atlassian cloud i don't know what is <laughs> yeah. um okay so let's um touch on so there's you know i want to talk about concerns about privacy and sharing information uh -huh. uh, it's always a concern for customers so how do atlassian handle that within jsm today so it's a common concern, uh, particularly where you've got service desks where maybe you're asking people outside of the business to to ask race questions or request a service. Um, and they may be coming from lots of different organizations. And obviously what you don't want to happen is that someone raises a ticket of some kind and then someone from another organization can see it. So out of the box, Jira Service Management is very restrictive. And you can, as a customer, if you're raising a support ticket of some, for example, only you and whoever's dealing with your ticket can see that ticket. Uh, so it's it's designed to be to honor privacy from out of the box, basically. Now, you as the, the customer who's raised the ticket within the service desk, you can elect to share your ticket with a colleague, for example. So you have the ability. So, for example, if I raise a ticket in, a, in, say, an HR service desk and I want my line manager to also be present on the ticket, I can actively share that ticket with the line manager. But that's something that I actually have to do. So again, the line manager doesn't see it unless we choose to let them. Uh, in addition to that, there are further layers of security that can be implemented whereby you can actually restrict individual tickets to certain named individuals. So it's very important for things like legal and HR uh, help desks. Um, 
and uh, you can also control what type of messaging is sent. So the types of emails that are sent in and out of the system and how much data is actually included in those emails. And then finally, uh, all the Atlassian products support GDPR uh, capabilities. So you can actually anonymize users within the system as well. So Atlassian are very strong on privacy. And so privacy is basically built out of the box. And then you've got various layers of control uh, that you can then customize on top of that. Fantastic. That's really reassuring. Um, so just to finish this off, we've talked about this SaaS platform a lot. So Atlassian call their SaaS platform uh, Atlassian Cloud. Um, can you talk about the benefit of having all your various teams in this one platform? So how do Jira service management users work with other Jira teams when they're in the same platform? Yeah, so it's a good question. And also it's probably one of the biggest advantages of JSM really. So we tend to find, you know, in, in you know, we tend to events now and we talk to other businesses. Many, many businesses have Jira that's used by their software engineering, software development teams, or even some of their business teams. But they may be using uh, an IT service management tool or a, or a service desk from a another vendor, you know, an OTRS or a Zendesk or something like this. Um, and often that creates separation between those teams. You get this kind of siloed structure where the team that's providing the service is within its own little castle. And if they're working with teams, you know, software development teams or business teams that are using Jira, there's very much a separation between the two. And some, a lot of tools will integrate with Jira, but it's not quite the same. It's, it's like a loose coupling really between the two. Now, as I mentioned, Jira service management is actually part of the Jira platform. So if you already use Jira software or, or, um, uh, Jira work management within the Atlassian cloud, you already have Jira service management. It's just not turned on. Once it's enabled, all of your tickets, your bugs, your issues, your backlog of work, your epics, your stories are all in one system. And so that means that any business rules or integrations um, or uh, cascading activity that you want to model within Jira can be achieved. So give an example, let's say you've got an IT service desk and people are reporting incidents and it's, there's a problem with a system that your software engineers have developed and uh, released. All of that information can be co-located and, and aggregated together. So the, the incidents that are created, the problems that are created, the bug that's then reported to the software development team, the progress of that bug, through the sprints and deployment through DevOps to the to the platform can, is all visible across the entire system and all interlinked. And so as progress on that on that fix is made, it can update the original tickets, it can notify the problem manager, it can notify the people who raised the incidents to say it's now been fixed. All of that can be fully automated out of the box. Um, so it makes it really powerful in terms of bringing teams together to collaborate uh, uh, within your business. Thanks, Gary. And again, that's a hell of a reason to move to this idea of the one platform on Jira Cloud. Um, cool. Right. So we've got a number of people watching us today. So I'm going to move to the live uh, Q&A. Uh, so we'll go to the questions now and uh, let's see what people are asking. OK, hey, question one, um, what sort of templates are there for advanced forms? Can I create my own custom form templates? One for you, Gary. Right. Um, I think I mentioned in uh, just a moment ago that you can you can use some of the out of the box forms. There's I don't know, two or three hundred of them, I think, and there are different forms for sort of IT teams, facilities teams, HR teams, and uh, you can design your own. And if you're familiar with using Confluence, it's it's really quite easy because the the editor you use to design and create your forms is basically just Confluence pages that you just add the the fields to that you want to capture on the forms. One of the things that uh, you can also do with that is you can share those forms around. So you can, using automation, which is the kind of uh, feature of all of the Jira products on the Jira platform, you can actually copy forms around, apply forms to particular uh, tickets when they've reached certain statuses or maybe when they're approved. So you can actually template many aspects of your workflow and then use these forms to augment it so if you for example let's say you have uh, an employee onboarding form and as part of that process you want to include a checklist at the end of it that you add to make sure that everything's been done you can have it so that when the employee onboarding ticket reaches a certain point that it adds that form as a checklist to the ticket and then you can go through and verify that everything's been complete so there's lots of clever things you can do with those forms 
Fantastic. I hope that answers that question. Thanks, Gary. Um, so how much work is there to take out of the box configuration and start using JSM today? It's as much or little as you want to, really. So I think um, I mentioned previously, a typical implementation for us is six to 10 days, something like that, if we're doing um, some of the work, um, plus training and various other bits and pieces. But in reality, and I've had many clients who've done this, you can actually take these out of the box templates and be up and running literally in minutes. They are so powerful and so well designed now compared to how they were three or four years ago. They really are designed to be out of the box and a vanilla configuration can pretty much work for you. And then what you can then do is like slowly adapt it. So you can start adding maybe an additional request type or adding a little automation rule that automatically creates a, a ticket maybe under certain circumstances. But you can literally just set it up, create a project, choose a template and actually be using it in a matter of minutes. It really is that quick. Yeah. And I've been saying this for probably about 10 years, but if you're using email to manage any workload in a team, Madness. this is exactly <laughs> the sort of thing to look for, for all the reasons yeah. Gary said. Uh, right. We have another one here. Bear with me. Uh, if you want to create a service desk for external customers, are there out of the box templates to help? So maybe let's touch on what that, you know, the idea of an external service desk for yeah. customers. So um, when you're providing a service desk through a tool, uh, often you'll either have internal customers, external customers, or sometimes you have a hybrid of both. So what do we mean by that? So internal customers, typically if you're doing an HR service desk or an IT support service desk, uh, they're, they're mainly internally facing service desks. You're going to have colleagues within your business who are going to use those to raise tickets and 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 unlock them uh an externally facing service desk is typically used where you have business partners b2b or maybe you have customers who buy your products and they want to provide you with feedback really good example some smaller companies we work with like property management companies and event management companies they use jira service management to manage the booking of things or events or products and so those are externally facing service desks where maybe you're going to have users raising tickets or contacting you who you've never heard of before maybe it's completely public facing and there are actually lots of different ways you can set it up uh, in fact there's a very good paper that atlassian have produced on the atlassian community about the different types of and ways that you can manage your customers whether it's internal hybrid or external um in the you know, to uh, to provide a kind of short short answer is you can kind of set it up how you want to. If you want people to have anonymous, to be able to anonymously log tickets, they can. If you want to control who can log tickets, you can. If you want to say only allow people from certain email domains, so if you've got a specific customer or customers who are the businesses that log tickets with you, you can restrict it so that only people from those domains, those websites, those email domains can log tickets with your service desk. So there's lots of different ways in which you can you can set that up. Um, and then what about the templates for those different customers? Is there any out of the box? Yeah. So there are out of the box settings for those three types. So if you're going for fully public, partially public or invite only, there are three settings, which right. essentially template the interaction. Uh, and then you can then decide how you then want to augment that, whether you want to actively invite people or if you just want to share a link, it will provide you with a link you can share as well. Mm -hmm. So it will do all that for you. And this is a great thing to think about if you yourself have customers that you are responsible for in your business and you can think of any job role where you're asking for this idea of repeated information because again use the email analogy the amount of times that we interact with customers and we need x y and z and they only reply x and y you know so yeah. by having a form you dictate more which means you're more efficient your customers happier so it's a great way of thinking about that final question i think i know the answer to this but how many of these externally facing customer um service desks can you have <laughs> there's a theoretical limit of one million <laughs> <laughs> okay so it's a lot i don't know of any of our customers and clients we've worked with have got anywhere near that i think the largest i'm aware of is about fifty thousand customers right so uh, yeah there's no there's no limit and you, and the beauty of it is you don't pay for a penny for them they're all free exactly exactly well that's a great way i think to finish the webinar so thank you for everyone who joined us today um look out for episode two and episode three uh, all that information is online and of course we'll follow up with you uh, but thank you for today and have a wonderful morning afternoon or evening depending on where you are in the world goodbye